new Fly QEFB 1.4 from Seattle Avionics. First, this is a major update. It's been a little while coming and I think you'll think that it's worth it. Let's take a look. The first major new feature is a distance and bearing with what we call train x-ray. The train x-ray feature shows you what the train profile looks like when you put two fingers on the map. Let's have a look. Let's say that you were flying along here and you are clearly making a detour to try to avoid the mountains. But of course you are flying with a non-pilot friend who says, hey, I see it looks like a little gap in here. Maybe we can go through the gap. Maybe that will make some sense and save a couple hours off our flight. Well, let's find out. The way that you can tell is you put two fingers on the map, like this, and not only does it tell you the distance and bearing, if you take a look, um, the first thing you probably notice is all the colors. Green means that you're fine with the terrain, but that red means that if you fly at the current altitude, which looking at the lower left corner of the screen, is about 8,000 feet. Uh, we have an upper terrain boundary here of about 11,476 feet, so clearly we're going to hit some terrain. That's what the red means. The yellow, of course, means that you're going to not hit it but be close, and the green means that you'll be clear. Up above is a rectangular area that tells you that that's the distance we just outlined is 100 nautical miles. It gives you the distance and the bearing, of course. But notice it also says that it's 64 minutes in one direction, 62 minutes in the other. Uh, both of them happen to burn about 9 gallons. Although if I move this, it may change a little. All right. So a couple of things. One thing is I just took one finger and I can move this however I want to, maybe looking for an area that it's easier to get around, like here, maybe a better course to take, and so on. You can move either side of it make it bigger, smaller, whatever it is, and the system recalculates the time they'll take to fly there going both ways and the amount of fuel that you'll burn going both ways. That's calculated, of course, based on the uh, winds aloft calculations. So, very easy to find out whether or not you should be flying in this. That is the distance and bearing feature with what we call terrain x-ray in FlyQ EFB 1.4. As we said, another feature that people requested a lot is the ability to see the distance or time between themselves and some other object. We answered this by adding in a ring system that you can configure and by having what we call the extended course line. Let's take a look. A common request we get is for some ability to sense the distance between two points. There are a couple ways to do that in FlyQ already. In FlyQ 1.4, we add a couple more. Here's one of them. Let's say that you're flying along and you want to get a sense of how far it is between points. We now have something that we call the distance measuring rings. Like other layers on the map, you tap the stack of papers icon in the upper left corner of the screen. And in this case, you look down at the very bottom where it says rings. If you turn the rings on, you have a set of rings. You can configure this however you like. Uh, by default, we have three rings that automatically size and resize themselves. When you rotate them around, the text stays straight up like this. The point is that you can set this to be either a fixed distance between points, automatically scale it, or if you'd rather it be based on time, you can set the rings based on one minute, two minutes, five minutes, whatever they are, as opposed to nautical miles. So in this particular case, what we're trying to do, of course, is if you are familiar with the Northeast Corridor, we're trying to avoid the ages around uh, DC. So the ring distance is very useful for knowing how far we are from staying away from that red line, which is the ages. Another tool that we can use is also enabled through the stack of papers icon, and this one is right above the rings. It's called the course line. Let's turn that on. For the course line, something extends out from the front of the plane that looks a little bit like an old barbershop pole. That pole is based, again, on either time or distance. And you notice that it's built into multiple segments. Each segment is one unit. For example, in this particular case, I've configured the system to look ahead 10 minutes at my current speed. Therefore, the alternations between the gray and the white each represent one minute. So in this particular case, if we were to continue going straight and not make a turn um, right there, if we didn't make that turn, and it looks like about four or five minutes, we'd be hitting the ATIS. I can tell that by looking at the extended course line. I also know by looking at the circle that it's somewhere around, oh, say, five miles or so, maybe eight, between five and six miles, is probably the point where I'm going to hit the ATIS again if I don't turn. So, with the, using these two features, either together or separately, you can get, get a good sense of the distance and time uh, so that you can avoid airspace or terrain. That is a, one of the new distance measuring features in FlyQ EFB 1.4. For search and rescue, we've added now three different styles of search and rescue grids.
Let's take a look at what those look like. If you're a member of the Civil Air Patrol, you'll love our new feature, the Search and Rescue Grid. Let's talk about that a little bit. Like any other feature in FlyQ, you enable it by hitting the tab that looks like a stack of papers in the top of the uh, screen, and then simply go down to the bottom where it says Grid. Turn on the grid. Now we start to zoom in, and you can begin to see the sectional grid. We have other systems available too. I'll show you that in a second, but if you need to use the cell system or need to use GARS, that's all there too. As you zoom in, you'll see more and more detail on the grid itself. It's all color-coded, by the way, too. So now you start to, so it's very clear to see which grid level is which. Zoom in enough and you begin to see the uh, alphanumeric quadrants. And of course, one nice feature is as you rotate the map around, the text stays straight up, which is quite nice. As I said, you can change the grid system too. So if you go to the settings button at the top of the screen, you can go down and where it says grid type, select that. And let's take maybe the cell grid system and go back to settings, hit done, and now here's a cell grid. Same grid with a different system, okay? So it's that simple. That's what it's like to use a new search and rescue grid in FlyQ EFB version 1.4. As far as ADSB receivers go, FlyQ EFB from Seattle Avionics has always been ahead of the game here. We don't support one brand or two brands. We now support nine different ADSB receivers. We've always supported the iLevel uh, Dual X GPS 170, and we've supported the Clarity units. Now in this new release, we support units from SkyRadar, including the very interesting SkyRadar DX, which is a very attractively priced dual channel unit that has a built-in AHARS for a 3D synthetic vision. In addition to the SkyRadar, we also added in support for the Pathfinder. So again, nine different ADSB receivers supported by FlyQ. We think that's very important because we fundamentally believe that you should not be locked into one particular ADSB receiver just because of your choice of app. You should be able to choose the best from each of those. A lot of other new features were added too. Let me show you some of the highlights. Previously in FlyQ, we had a summary and we still have. We have a summary bit of information that tells you all the key information that you need to know about an airport. In FlyQ EFB from Seattle Avionics 1.4, we now added a new tab to the airports. I've highlighted it here. This is the AFD tab. In the AFD tab, you now have the ability to look at the true um, FAA document um, from the AFD. All of it's there. Of course, you can pinch this and zoom it to see it a little bit uh, larger. We've also added much uh, larger and much more easier to read aircraft markers. For example, now we have 12 different markers that you can use to signify where your aircraft's location is. In the current version of the product, there was one marker. It's the one I just outlined in blue. Now let's see what the differences are uh, between 1.3 and version 1.4. First of all, by the way, this is the new flight plan line. It's subtle. You may not notice a difference, but the flight plan line itself is now a lot easier to see. This is the aircraft icon in FlyQ EFB 1.3. So that's what that looked like. Let's take a look at the first thing we did. The first thing we want to do was to make it larger. So, now it's about 50% larger. That wasn't good enough. Then we changed the color on it. We think this color makes it a lot easier to see. But of course, folks have told us that they'd like a choice in colors. So, if you don't like blue and white, you can also do this in red and white. Or, if you fly a helicopter, now you don't have to have your aircraft icon looking like a fixed wing aircraft. It can now look like a helicopter. Again, in your choice of blue, or red, and you can make the size difference too. You can also do it in green. So what we tried to do here was to, change, to give you a choice of 12 different aircraft markers and pick the one that's best for you. Units. Again, it's been a very common request from people who fly older planes especially, that they want miles per hour instead of knots. Or for people who may fly in Europe, they want the ability to use, uh, instead of using feet, they want to be able to use meters, things like that. You can now change all the units that you like, and the system automatically displays it in whatever unit preferences you uh, like. Latitude-longitude injury. This was a very common request. A lot of people said that they need the ability to type in a specific latitude-longitude and use it as a waypoint, either for takeoff or landing, or just somewhere along the route. We heard you. So now, if you take a look at the upper left-hand corner of the screen, I've highlighted it here, that is how you can enter latitude-longitude. 
You can enter it almost any way. You can enter the longitude first, the latitude first, you can use decimals, you can use minutes and seconds. It will figure out almost anything you do. This is just one example. I've entered in the latitude longitude location near where we are in Seattle. And let's take a look what happens. When I hit the enter button, it tells you what it thinks you entered, so it essentially decodes and displays on the map. You can immediately then, just like with any other point, you can hit the Direct 2 button or press the plus FP button to add it to your flight plan. Alternately, if you simply tap on anywhere on the grid here in the latitude longitude, you jump to that point on the map, just like that. Okay. So, there's quite a lot new in Fly QEFB from Seattle Avionics version 1.4. This has given you a taste of it, and we think you're going to like it. For Seattle Avionics, I'm Steve Podrachik, CEO. Thank you.